So you're a car detailing enthusiast, or perhaps you're a professional car detailer that's starting his business, and you're curious to know what is the best car wash kit so you can wash the exterior of your car. So in this video, I'm going to cover what I believe to be my favorite kit for car washing. So the more advanced one, because in the previous video, we had the beginner's kit. So value oriented proposition, super low price, but good, decent quality tools, products, and equipment to get the job done. But today we're focusing on the cream of the crop, the better stuff that you're going to need, of course, especially for the chemicals. So uh, you can do uh, the best possible job all while having the best user experience. So budget is not as much of a concern in this video. And also quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. Nobody paid for this video. And I will include the links to all the tools, products, and equipment I talk about in the description under the video so you guys can check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So we're again focusing on washing the exterior of the vehicle. I'll have other videos for the interior and more advanced stuff if you want. And I have close to a thousand videos at this point on my channel. I'm filming this in March of 2024. So let's dive right into it. We're going to use uh, a bunch of very good chemicals, by the way. And if you have any substitutions to propose, uh, some products that you believe might be on this list, because I haven't tested all the products known to mankind. I do uh, do a lot of testing on the channel, but you never know what's new out there. I'm always on the hunt for the next greatest thing for you guys and for me to test. So uh, let me know, drop a comment in the comment section if you guys have alternatives to these, depending of course on which country you live in. Sometimes you guys have access to stuff that we don't in North America, meaning USA and Canada mainly. Um, so yeah, again, check the links in the description for all the cool stuff. Let's start right away with the chemicals themselves. So I'm going to know in order that I usually use them. So I start with the wheels and tires because they're usually the dirtiest parts of the vehicle. So I like to knock that out of the park uh, before we wash the rest of the vehicle. So I like to use a two-in-one. So this, by the way, is all things we're going to use for your regular weekly washes. I wash my car twice weekly for those who are wondering. Uh, but regardless if you wash your car on a weekly basis, bi-weekly basis, or monthly basis, the more regular car washes you do, the better your car is going to look, of course, and you're going to maintain it a lot longer. But we're not looking for anything super harsh in this video. So no harsh soaps, uh, no crazy alkaline high pH or acidic type shampoos for your more in-depth grime removal or spring cleanings or deeper cleanings, for example. We're just looking for things to do your regular maintenance washes. So for the wheels and tires, you can use a separate tire cleaner or a separate wheel cleaner. So two products, but I like to use a two-in-one. So PNS Brake Buster. This one here often takes first place in my tire and wheel cleaners comparisons uh, because it is very inexpensive. You can get this in a bigger sized format. Uh, you can, although it doesn't mention it on the label, dilute this in a foaming pump sprayer. I typically use one to three, up to one to five. So for that foaming action, you're gonna save a lot of product and the bigger gallon size obviously uh, gets you an uh, even cheaper price. Still safe on ceramic coated wheels. I have ceramic coated wheels and I use this all the time. Absolutely no problem. And and yeah, it just works. So a two product and one, you can clean both the tires to remove that grime, that browning, that blooming, uh, and uh, remove any previous uh, gunked up tire dressing that's accumulated on there because you want your tire to be as clean as possible before you apply your tire dressing, right? That's how your dressing is going to bond better, last longer, and also how it's not going to sling on the surface. All those black tire dressing spots that fly off on your paint, we don't want that. So all is in the proper tire prep. So use a wheel and tire cleaner. It's going to also clean your wheels fantastically well. It adds a um, anti-corrosive uh, little film on your wheels as well to prevent future corrosion. So this is something very specific to this one. So PNS Brake Buster. Next, we're going to move on to wash the car. But before we do so, you sometimes accumulate bug guts and bug grime. So one of my favorite uh, bug removers is G-Technic W8 Bug Remover. This is version 2, uh, their latest one. So you would pre-spray, let it dwell a bit, and then you can apply the snow foam on your vehicle on top of this, no problem. This is also safe on ceramic coated vehicles. By the way, G-Technic is a maker of fantastic uh, ceramic coatings, so they know how to formulate their bug removers to be safe on those coatings as well. So by spraying this, you're going to soften up those bug guts and bug grime because uh, those are acidic and they can etch through the clear coat if left unattended 
intended. By the way, always wash your car in the shade and on a cool surface, never in direct sunlight. That's to have the best user experience, to not have any water spotting issues or no products drying up on you. So you sprayed your bug remover if you have bug guts uh, and on your uh, on your paint, and then you're going to spray, uh, you're gonna blanket the vehicle with a snow foam, right? So the snow foam is gonna help to kind of encapsulate, emulsify a bit of that loose dirt and debris. You're gonna rinse that off and all in an effort to minimize the chances of scratching or marring your paint when you do the contact wash. So we're gonna use a soap that can do both the foam cannon in a one to 10 dilution ratio and be placed in the bucket for your contact wash. You would use 1.35 ounces of this in a four to five gallon bucket, that's all you need. So uh, very inexpensive in long-term use, especially if you get the bigger sizes. And this is CarPro Reset. My favorite soap for use on ceramic coated cars. Even if your car is not ceramic coated, you're still fine and covered, absolutely no problems. This is still, by the way, close to pH neutral. Uh, still the ingredients in there, perhaps a bit too strong for use on um, regular waxes or uh, paint sealants. So be more careful. I would recommend that you use something uh, uh, different than this. This I would use more on unprotected paint or on the coatings, for example. And if you just have a regular wax or sealant, um, use something like, uh, I don't know, Adam's Car Shampoo or the uh, Turtle Wax um, Hybrid Solutions Pro Slick and Slide Pure Wash, another pH neutral shampoo. I had that in my beginner's uh, car wash kit tutorial, so, um, or kit if you want. So that one works well, but if you have a coating, this is fantastic. So again, you can use it both uh, in your foam cannon for the pre-wash stage and also in your bucket for the contact wash. Again, we're not looking for those acidic shampoos like CarPro D-Scale for mineral deposit removal uh, or a built hammer touchless or built hammer auto foam or even CarPro Lift, the higher alkaline snow foams for deeper cleaning during the pre-wash stage. Those are for more specific uh, maintenance washes, just a pH neutral soap here for your regular weekly washes. Again, keep that in mind. This is why I designed this kit. Um, it smells great and it just does fantastic cleaning. No gloss boosters, no additives, no ceramic components, no waxes in there, just a pure shampoo, as pure as it gets. Now, if you can't wash your car the traditional way with wash buckets or don't necessarily have access to free flowing water in a pressure washer or garden hose, what you can use is a rinseless wash. I have a full tutorial on how to do that on my channel. And one of my favorite ones and also a a crowd favorite from my viewers is the uh, DIY Detail Rinseless Wash. This one here is the standard 1 to 256 dilution, meaning you only need half an ounce of this for every gallon of water. So if you're using um, three gallons of water, well, all you need is one and a half ounces in your wash bucket of this, and that is it. That's how you're going to clean the surface. Now, of course, use common sense with rinseless washes. If your car is caked in mud and dirt, you're gonna wanna pre-rinse your vehicle first. A rinseless wash doesn't mean that you never rinse your vehicle. It just means that no rinsing is needed at the end of the wash process. Process. So again, go check out the um, tutorial on my channel if you want to see how that's made. But this is an alternative way to wash your car and a safe method if you use common sense and it's on not too dirty of a vehicle. So we're done washing the car now, right? We did the wheels and tires. We washed the entire surface of the vehicle. You fully rinse that down. And while it's still wet, before you start towel drying, I highly recommend that you use a drying aid. A drying aid is a lubricant that's on the surface that acts uh, as a buffer between the paintwork and your microfiber drying towel. So the more lubrication you have during the hand drying process or towel drying process, the less chances you have of marring your paint. So it's during the hand wash stage and during the towel drying stages that you get the most chances of marring your paint. So by having a soap with great lubrication when you're hand washing, you're reducing the chances of marring the paint. And in the towel drying stage, if you're using a towel to dry your vehicle, while well, using a quick detail spray as a drying aid works wonders to add lubrication, but also boost the gloss and the slickness on the surface once you're done. So in this case, I highly recommend one that I've been really, really liking recently, had this in a video as well, Armor Detail Supply Amplify. So this one here is an SiO2 or ceramic based spray detailer. You can still use this on top of regular waxes uh, and paint sealants, no problem. Uh, but if you have a ceramic coating or graphene coating, even better. This is a perfect uh, playmate for that. It goes well together. It's going to boost that gloss, boost that slickness, and also have crazy lubrication on the surface when you're towel drying. So it's going to prevent, again, the marring. It smells great. Fantastic. Everything they do. Great trigger sprayer. Uh, you can get this in a bigger size as well. Again, check the links in the description for all this stuff.
So now the vehicle is dry, it's uh, glossy, it's slick, it looks amazing, but some of the final detail touches we still need to do to make the vehicle pop and stand out from the rest and uh, well, make sure that everybody understands that your car is properly detailed. So we're going to be applying a tire dressing. So this one here from CarPro is called Darkside. It's actually a tire and rubber sealant, so it has higher durability compared to normal water-based dressings that only last a week or two. This will last upwards of a month in most conditions. It has hydrophobic properties, it has UV protection built in, and it gives you a satin black shine, so not overly oily looking or too wet of an appearance and not too matte. So the perfect blend once again, very easy to apply. It's in liquid form, super inexpensive. And it won the battle of my favorite tire dressings in a recent video. So you can go and check that uh, again because it's such good value for money. This one here is in 16.9 ounces or 500 milliliters, but you can get this again in bigger sizes. Perfect blend. I know a lot of you guys who uh, um, applied this really, really like it. Again, one of my favorite tire dressing of the year for sure. CarPro Dark Side. Not only does it last long, but it gives that, again, that Goldilocks finish, right? Not too uh, donut gl glazed donut look, but not matte either, like you didn't apply anything. Perfect blend in between. Last but not least for that final detailed touch is to clean your glass. You're going to use an automotive grade glass cleaner, which we in the industry call finishers because they're made to do that final finish. And it's the new Built Hamber Traceless. So this here is an ammonia-free glass cleaner, and which means that it's safe for use on tinted windows. If you're cleaning the interior glass and you have tinted film, this won't damage it. Uh, it comes in many sizes. This one here, I think, is the uh, one liter, if memory serves me well. So uh, Traceless. The fact is, it is very safe on all surfaces, but very, very effective at breaking down a lot of the leftover grime that you might have. Because even if you clean your vehicle, sometimes your glass, because it's a porous material, still has a bit of that grime that is not necessarily removed by traditional car soaps. So this one here is super wetting. You can check out my full review on that. If it's not out on my channel yet, you're going to see it uh, in a few days. Um, but yeah, super wetting, meaning that when you spray it on the surface, it clings on there. So it's not going to run and droop all over the place. And it's going to be a wider spread as well. So a more uniform kind of appearance. And it has low surface tension. So it can break down all that dirt and that grime. Pete Hamber, the chief uh, chemist and uh, CEO of Built Hamber Laboratories in the UK, did a fantastic job with this. So uh, this is definitely becoming my favorite glass cleaner. The atomization from the trigger sprayer is awesome as well. And this this just works. So you're going to clean your glass with this and have a crystal clear glass finish. So now let's dive into the tools and the equipment that you're going to need to do the job, right? So we spoke about washing the vehicle. You're going to need wash mitts. I recommend two of them. One that you can use for your wheel faces and the other one for the, the paintwork. So I always like to have two dedicated wash mitts. I don't want any cross-contamination because the wheels are very, very dirty, so you don't want that stuff on your paint. And I always recommend that you guys get microfiber wash mitts. They are the softest that you can have, and they usually have these kinds of materials where the dirt can get inside the fibers and not stay on the surface, so you're not scratching when you're using these. They glide over the surface. And two of my favorite ones is the Incredimit from Microfiber Madness. These guys are out of Europe, in Germany more specifically, and they do some very, very high quality microfibers. And the other ones from the RAG company, this, I think they're calling this the Cyclone Wash Mitt. So again, you can see similarities in both as far as colors are concerned, but they use different types of uh, microfiber structure and technology. But again, all the same purpose, to be very gentle on the surface. You can get them in wash pad formats for both. So they call it the Incredi Pad for this. And this, I don't remember what they call their pad for, but uh, I prefer wash mitts personally, because it allows me to put my hand in there and to contour the surface better. But that's a question of personal preference. Get a wash wash pad or a wash mitt as long as you're getting high quality stuff. Next, you're going to need a towel or you can use a, like I do, car dryer or leaf blower, but that is way more expensive. They're battery powered or corded depending on what you need. So you can look into that. I have a video, by the way, on the best car dryers if you want to check that out. But the majority of people use a good quality microfiber drying towel. And this one here, 
It was featured in many drawing towel battles and always finished uh, close to first or first, so first for performance, uh, only beaten by its brother. So this one here is the Gauntlet version number two from the Rag Company. And I say beaten by its brother, they have the uh, Rag Company Liquidator. So this one here is premium Korean microfiber and the Liquidator is made in China, still very high quality, but much lower priced, right? So that one was in the beginner card detailing kit. This one here is my more advanced one. It's even plusher, even higher quality, and you're getting crazy good performance. They have multiple sizes available. And uh, this is the latest version, by the way. And uh, it is just super smooth on the surface. It will glide, pick up the water effortlessly. And always remember to clean and wash your microfiber towels before their first use. By the way, quick pro tip, I have a full tutorial on that too. How to properly clean microfiber towels. It's uh, been very, very popular. I have a few of those on my channel actually. And uh, well, one of them already went viral. And the most recent one is doing super well as well. Because people want to learn how to do that stuff correctly. Uh, the next microfiber towel I highly recommend. Get yourself a good quality glass towel. This one here is from the Rag Company. Once once again, this is one of their premium glass towels. This is a waffle weave towel, as you can tell by the print. What makes a towel a glass towel? Typically, it's a shorter pile like this. So it's very, very thin if you look at it. It doesn't lint, so it won't cause any linting on the surface, which is also very key and important. And it just does a great job. So some of them uh, like to have uh, more of a diamond weave pattern or more of a flatter weave. Really depends, but use a glass specific towel. This one here has been a staple in my arsenal for many, many years, and I love their uh, glass towels. Next, for the tools, to clean your tires, you need a tire brush, stiff nylon brush type thing. So this one here is from the Detail Factory. They have this regular sized one with these bristles here, as you can tell, and they have an Excel version now. If you have wider profile or higher tire sidewall on your vehicle, if you have like a large truck or an SUV, the ergonomics are amazing, very compact. It works super well, the price is great. They got everything right with this. So a Detail Factory tire brush, uh, then, for the interior of your wheels or your wheel barrels, you're gonna need another wheel brush. This one here is the Easy Detail. This is their big version. They also have a smaller one, depending on what size wheels you have. What I like about this, they have a knuckle guard here. So great ergonomics with the handle, but this is very, very pliable. You can even bend it depending on what you need. And it can easily contour behind big brake kits, like on my Porsche 911 Turbo S, 10 piston calipers, carbon ceramic brakes, huge, massive discs. Well, this can go behind those brake calipers with no no issues. Now, if you have a delicate wheel surface like gloss black wheels, for example, I highly recommend that you look into a microfiber um, brush for the wheels, like this one here. This is from Autofiber. This is their barrel blade brush. So it has this removable microfiber cover. So this is as gentle and plush as it gets. Reminds you of the other gentle and plush microfiber wash mitts, right? So that's the process with this to not scratch or damage or mar your gloss black surfaces, which are more fragile. So it has this great ergonomic brush uh, um, handle once again. You can hang it thanks to this hole here. If you have hangers like I have to organize my tools in my garage and this just way it works super well. You can remove the cover, wash it, reinstall it if need be and you're good to go. To apply the dressing on your tires, you're gonna need a tire dressing applicator. And this one here has always been my favorite one. This is the Adams Hex Pro Grip tire dressing applicator. So it has these grooves here, so you can have good ergonomics. It's like a puck and these dimples on which you can spray your um, tire dressing if it's a spray, or you can put the uh, liquid if it's a liquid form. You're going to uh, spread it on the sidewalls of your tires and that's it. Your hands never get dirty with this. Uh, maintenance is very simple. When you're done, just lay it face down on an old microfiber towel until the next use because you're likely only using this for applying tire dressings but if it gets gunked up and you want to really thoroughly clean it just spray some apc work it in rinse it with warm water let it air dry store it face down on an old towel and you're good until your next use for the pre-wash stage so you, you have your pressure washer by the way if you want to select a pressure washer that really depends on which budget you have at that point so i'll leave a video in the description uh, where we compared pressure washers from 50 bucks all the way up to two thousand dollars depending on your budget, your needs, and all that kind of stuff. So that should definitely help you uh, to kind of figure out what you need. Uh, typically, what we recommend in the detailing world is anything between 1,000 to 2,000 
PSI, and anything between 1.3 to 2.1 gallons per minute. The more gallons per minute of water output you have, the better, by the way, uh, to clean vehicles. You're going to get more cleaning units out of it, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, the higher GPM is good. Don't go over 2,000 PSI because that could be dangerous for the paintwork. So if you have a high-powered 5,000 PSI gas uh, pressure washer, don't use that to clean cars. Or if you can, dial down that pressure back to 2,000 or less PSI, right? Uh, so next, you're going to need for the pre-wash stage a foam cannon with your pressure washer. So if we're looking at the top of the top, I reviewed this on my channel for the best build quality. It is the most expensive, but it is full stainless steel body uh, engineered and uh, designed in the US of A. This is Griot's Garage boss foam cannon so everything about it screams quality from the bottle itself with the white base it has markings on the side so you know where to fill it up to uh, this is a one liter container or a thousand milliliters it has the uh, quick connect in the form of a quarter inch quick connect you have the knob up top that lets you inject more or less of the solution to control the foam output uh, in the front here you can see how wide or how narrow the fan spread is coming out of the nozzle itself and again just top of the line construction uh, absolutely crazy it has a weighted ball in the bottom there in the pickup tube so that way you almost have like 360 degrees of pickup stainless steel ball here with a filter at the end. Just top-notch construction, some awesome stuff by Griot's Garage. If you want to spend a little less money but still get crazy foam output, uh, I know not everyone wants to order from overseas, um, but if that if you don't mind, uh, then you can get one of the best value and still high quality. So uh, this is the MJJC Foam Cannon S uh, version 3.0, so transparent here, one liter container, uh, a bit more flexible, but it still has a white base so it won't tip over. Uh, good brass body, it has the quarter inch quick connect, same knob up top to control the, uh, the flow, how much foam output you're getting. Uh, you can also control how wide or how narrow that fan spread is. You can also control if you want the fan to come out horizontal like this or vertical so just a great design overall it gets you that nice clear bottle so you can see what's inside there and the foam output of this is nuts probably the highest foam generation out of all foam cannons out there currently this is probably one of the best ones out there so some people might ask well pan if i don't have a pressure washer set up i'm obviously not going to get a foam cannon so am i doomed i can't do any uh pre-wash with a snow foam well you can you would get for your garden hose at that point a foam gun so that's the difference so this one here is from Adams Polishes works very well and the difference as you can tell at the end here you have this attachment with the garden sprayer so you would attach your garden hose right here you have your regular garden sprayer and this here is your foam gun so in here you would put your wash solution so the snow foam mixed with your water and it's going to shoot out out of here the only thing, don't expect the same level of foam as you'd get from a proper pressure washer and foam cannon setup, but this is still a good alternative if you don't want to spend the money to get a pressure washer and foam cannon setup. This you just connect to your regular garden hose. It's uh, good to go. You can even disconnect it when you're done using it, and you can use this here, this uh, trigger gun with your normal water coming out so you can use it as a normal garden hose after that and then when you want to use it as a foam gun you attach it using the quick connect option and there you go you're going to blanket your vehicle with a bit runnier of a foam if you want to see what it looks like foam cannon compared to a foam gun i have a video on that using an adams foam cannon and an adams foam gun so we compare things from the same company and you're going to see what kind of foam output uh, you can get or expect from that kind of a setup so uh, guys again i remind you i'll leave the links to all these tools products and equipment in the description under the video for you guys to check all of that stuff up uh, if there's anything that you noticed in there that you would replace with something that you recommend that uh, i check out or that my viewers check out as well let me know drop a comment in the comment section i like to read you guys it's always nice to have viewer input we're a big community and it's nice to know uh, what others use i'm always on the hunt for the next best greatest thing and who knows there's something that i might not have tested uh, that could be a good replacement so we're looking for very high performance and quality uh, in this video money is of no um, well not really a concern uh, if you're value oriented or budget content well make sure you go see my first video which is the beginner's car detailing kit so that one we were aiming for the lowest possible price all while keeping 
performance decent, but in this video, we were maximizing high quality performance and the best user experience. So I hope you enjoyed this. Smash the thumbs up button. That really helps the algorithm and it helps support this channel. Uh, share my video with family and friends or anybody who might benefit from this information. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to my channel yet, consider clicking the subscribe button that's found under this video. That way you'll continue to learn more about car detailing, all the products, equipment, tips, tricks, and techniques. So guys, thanks for being there. Thanks for watching. And in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one.